It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. We're live now. Hello everybody, this is Tyler Preston 20. I'm here with Valentina Ortiz and we're just gonna talk about what's ever so on our mind. So how are you doing? Hey, how are you, Brother? Thank you for inviting me. Uh, no problem. It's like been what two years since we last chat? Two years, I think. Yeah. yeah. Maybe more. Like the last time we chat, I think you were like in Buenos Aires. You're then you moved to like New York and now you're in Madrid right now? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah, about a couple of months to New York, so, but yeah, yeah. So how's like the whole coronavirus going on in Madrid right now? Like, are the stores kind of opening up right now, or? Yeah, uh, stores opened like two or three weeks ago. Uh, weeks ago. First started like with um, cafeterias and bars and places like that open to a uh, thirty percent of their total capacity. And with distance between tables and stuff, but progressively they have like a stair system when they go through faces. And now we are in the new normality, what they call the new morality. The new morality. What? Yeah, yeah. New normality. That 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 the new. Yeah. <laughs> well, <Yeah. okay. laughs> that's interesting term. I never heard someone call it that way, but okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the real me. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> like the president talks about the new normality, you know? And it was like phase zero, phase one, three, uh, two, three, four, new normality. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so scary though, like that term, like, huh? It is, it's kind of black mirror. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's kind of funny because I cannot talk about the other states here, but like in my state for Maryland is uh, different because um, the stores are kind of opening up right now. Yeah. And also like you have to wear like the mask and everything. And so you have to also have the gloves too to get inside the buildings. And also for restaurants, you cannot eat inside. You can only just order out. Or you can order the food at your house. As far as like, you know, um, what happened with like, I think it was, yeah, not just Madrid, but I think different parts of Spain too. But um, can you go into like a lot of details about what happened on like March the 8th? Because apparently I heard from people that uh, the president, like, uh, he said that it's okay for people to have like uh, the marches across Spain. Yeah. And apparently I heard that one of the leaders for Podemos, he got coronavirus. And <laughs> can you go into more details about that? That's, that's really funny. Because yeah. when the, all the coronavirus crisis uh, exploded, we were three days ago from the March from the Women's Day. Yeah, yeah. Lots and lots and lots of people go to that, that march every, every year. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, they say it comes from, I don't know, um, the health minister. Like, they, they said, like, it's fine. Like, I'm not the one who's telling you if you have to go or not. If, if, my, if my son, these exact words, if my son wants to go, I'm not telling him to not to, you know? Um, so a lot of people went, of course. I have to say, there's a lot of people that stay home, even though the government said, yeah, go, go. <laughs> uh, so the proportion between last year, it was less, uh, a lot less. But still, it was a lot of people in this middle of a fucking pandemic. And not only that, but the... Um, the equality minister here is the uh, who is um pablo iglesias wife i don't know you know pablo iglesias the, yeah he is well, like the yeah he is like the guy for Podemos. Yeah. yeah so his wife she's the equality minister <laughs> yes I think they made it for her. Like, I want to do something. What, what do you want to do? I want to do equality. Okay, great. You have a minister now. So at some point, well, she went to the march 
and there's a lot of videos of her like seeing people hugging, kissing, and there's a special video where there's like old women uh, talking to her like, hey, I'm so glad you're here, blah, blah, blah. And she got like <coughs> in the middle of the, in front of all ladies in the march. And three days after they confirmed she was COVID-19 positive. So I, these are these are my 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 thoughts. But I think like half of the people in Spain that have COVID nineteen, they have it through her. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised either. Like, like how could you be so? Like how could they be so irresponsible? <laughs> Even there is the worst thing is after that happened, like a month after that happened. Uh, it came out a document signed by all the responsible people here in Spain, uh, included Fernando Simon, the person that was in charge of the whole pandemic on, in Spain, signed by them three, it's three days before the, the march that says that it was a risk to get a lot of people together and that the contact, uh, the, um, how do you call it when you get the virus to others? Like contact, like get contact or contagion, I, contagion. Yeah, well, contagion. Can, they just like a uh, matter and a half uh, from the, the distance, and okay. with all that information that they already had it, they encourage people to go to the to the march, and it's like. I, I really don't, I can't understand. And a couple of weeks ago, finally we had a video that got filtered from the from this lady, the, the quality minister, before or after I an interview with the with, uh, with, uh, media. And on the interview, nobody was asking anybody with being asked. Um, she was saying like, yeah, well, uh, we couldn't say people not to go to the march because that would be irresponsible. That would be irresponsible for the people you already paid to do the march, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it also true that they have like some sort of ministry of truth? Uh, well, some sort of, I don't know if it's calling that, but. Um, yeah, it have like the government uh, into WhatsApp and and those things, you know. They have um, a company between the government and WhatsApp dealing with what are fake news and what are, are aren't. But actually, that's so ambiguous. That that's the problem, you know. It's not like okay, if you give an information that is allegedly fake and you can you can check that it's fake i think there's a a motive to do that a reason but it it, it goes to points that you don't really you're not sure if at what point that's that's real or that's a way to cut your balls or your opinion <laughs> yeah because like you know sometimes like like, of course, there's, like, people who just shout, like, fake news, fake news, fake news, but then there's actually legit fake stuff going on. And so I don't think, you know, if people just express their opinion, that it just counts as, you know, fake news. Like, of course, if someone considers themselves to be an authority and they just misinform people, then, of course, I could guess it could be considered, like, fake news. But sometimes also, like, articles, too, I noticed that... Every time I read something, I want to double check about the article, the headline, because even then, like the article and the headline, it can also lie too. Of course, of course, totally. And that's that's the thing that happens here a lot in Spain. That maybe the, the headline of a of a story is something like terrible and you know, what the fuck. But then you get to read the news, and, and it, for example, it doesn't. A story here in a uh, newspaper from from Spain that was um, like 
patriarchy in museums. Like there are more more male animals on museums that that female animals. <laughs> Those are true news. You know that that's that's real. That's not ironic. That's not a satire. It, that's fucking true. And when you get to read the story, it says like um, the the scientists and the investigators that made this study, they say that this is this isn't because of patriarchy. This is because there, we don't have the same number of males and females in every species. So, <laughs> and then the title is like patriarchy in the museum. Oh my! Oh my! God. Yeah. yeah. Totally. That is like this. Okay, I think I lost brain cells listening to that. Oh my and god. Everyone, 20% of the homeless are women. I love that one. I love that one because why is it the news, the 20%? It shouldn't be the news, the 80% that is the big number. What are you trying to say there? It's like. We're giving you the same information, but on the way we structure the, the line, it can make you think there's an, a, a victim or something like that that there, that there is not, you know? Make it more... But, like, getting back to the patriarchy, like, do you think that uh, Argentina or Spain is a patriarchy? No. I, I don't really think so. But I don't think so in the U.S. either, for example, or in any occidental country. And mostly because I, I really think it's like getting no respect for what other feminists in the past did. Like they got us out of a patriarchy that at some point we had. And now we're still saying that we're in a patriarchy when we have all the same rights that men have in our society. All the same. Like we not abortion because of course we don't have, you don't have the chance to get pregnant but i mean in the things we are objectively equal um capable of doing some stuff we have the same rights and we have the same access to the same thing and at what's the point in this in the world where we hadn't where we were um Second citizens, if you want to call it. Where yeah, we, second we, class citizens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that's, that's not only not true that we live in a patriarchy, but also I think it's not recognizing our story, uh, what happened to us, and what other, the, the suffragist movement, for example, what they did. It's like erasing totally the, their part, what they did, to continue fighting fights that we already fighted. Like if we have that same attention and that same energy on other issues, maybe we can get even closer to a more equal society for everybody. We get over and over again of those same subjects. We're gonna get blocked. We cannot move forward if we keep Put, uh, putting our attention in those issues. About, like, you know, the claim about rape culture, because I notice, like, sometimes people say, well, you see, we live in a rape culture, and so what do you think about that concept of rape culture? I think we have to start to define what is rape culture, because uh, the, a lot of people define it differently. And the, for me, the most objective way to see we live in a rape culture is to see what happens with a rape sex place. But we can, I think we cannot talk about a rape culture. In a culture and that's rape, one of the worst, most disgusting things a person can do. In our culture, that's not something we want in each other. Something that, hey, bring somebody. Okay, I don't want to talk to you anymore in my life. They like, never come to my store again. You know, it's not something that we we reinforce. It's something that we take out of our our, our circle if someone does it. You know what I mean? It's hard. Right, right, right. Because like it kind of. 
depends. Like, obviously, if we had a rape culture, like, I wouldn't think that, of course, we would have laws that, you know, go after rapists. Because if someone is accused of rape, people would take them to trial to get, like, a hearing from a court. Yeah. And so... I don't think a rape culture would actually, you know, not go after rape. I think a rape culture would probably, you know, let the bad guys go away. There were always bad guys. There were always bad people. And there were always people committing crimes. Whether the circumstances allow it some things or not. I mean, um, of course, if you have no punishment, no... Um, way to control persons who are committing some crimes, you're going to have a much more uh, quantity of those crimes because there are a lot of people that get out of those ideas because of the, of the, what it comes after, of the consequences. But even if you have the better um, circumstances and the better punishment for those kind of crimes and the better ways to um, avoid people committing that crimes, even in that situation, we're going to have a small piece of circle of people that keep doing those things. So that's for on one side. And we can set our attention in other crimes that are more common that most people have suffered in their life. Not everybody has been bullied. But in Argentina, for example, everybody has been bullied. So we are not talking about uh, um, stealing culture or something like that because we don't have a political subject in it that is so important now in our political power. You know what I mean? Right, because there's laws against stealing, there's mm -hmm. laws against murder, there's laws against all the type of horrendous crimes. Exactly. And so obviously the culture does not support stealing or support murder or like these other kind of things exactly <laughs> so. in an era where it's totally normal to get on the street and have I, like i like the women i think i'm gonna rape her and everybody does that of course we talk about the culture it's obvious there <laughs> but that's not the world we're living in right now that's not the country or culture we are surrounded by now Right, because we have, like, people, like, most men know it's wrong. Most women know it's, like, everybody knows it's wrong. So how is it, like, you know, a cultural phenomenon? Exactly. Exactly. Everybody thinks it's wrong. And even though, personally, individually, not only collectively, but individually, each one of us, the majority of us, is rejecting people who commit those crimes. It's not like, okay, it's illegal, but we actually don't care. Like, uh, um, like um, down downloading movies from the internet, you know? That's <laughs> no, nobody gives a fuck about that. But that's not... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> I think most people probably at one point downloaded a movie from the internet, so. Yeah, so, yeah, we're all, I'm, you know, yeah, probably, we're all criminals, but uh, we don't think that's wrong, you know, at some point, <laughs> we don't think that's wrong. Right, right. right. But that's what happens with harming another people, another person, because we understand from our so socialization, we want to talk about socialization. From our socialization, we know that hurting a person in that sense and not consenting is wrong. And we penalize that, from even from our ethics, not only from the law. Right. As far as, like, free speech, like, we're, like, I feel as though we're, like, one of the only few countries on this planet that actually support free speech. Like, how is, like, free speech in Argentina? I know that Spain has, like, hate speech laws. Like, most European countries have hate speech laws. But what about, like, Argentina? Well, in Argentina, the, it's, it's weird because free speech depends on what topic you're talking about. For example, we don't have, I don't think, maybe we do. Uh, there's a couple of... I, I, I was, I've been living out in Argentina for a couple of years, but 
we have the um, women protection law that you can get um, demanded, how do you call it? You can go to court for staying on TV that a case isn't gender violent, that it's another kind of violence. For example. What? Yeah. They, they really did that. It was a case about um, a famous case because it was in between public people from TV and stuff that one accused another one of a sexual assault from a case a lot of years ago. And even though there's the, the, the process isn't complete, even though there's some evidence that could show could show, I don't know either because the, the process isn't finished, but could show that it was consent. Someone said on TV this, someone said that they think that that's not really how they have to handle the case and stuff. And a collective from women in Argentina, uh, they, they, I don't know, they get them, they get them to court through that law. So yeah, depends on the subject you're talking about. Well, for example, now they have a, um, I don't know the name in English because it's a name that I only heard here in Spain, but it's something before something could be a law, they presented to, you know what Wait, I mean? Some, something that, that's okay, like a proposal? Proposal? Yeah, a a proposal. proposal. After if the proposal got approved, they okay. make a project, and after the project, if the project gets approved, then you have a law. Okay. Well, in that proposal, they took a proposal where they can. Um, I'm gonna look for a word. <laughs> you've been doing so good so far. You you you're doing much better than the last time we talked. Much better. Way way better. I I knew it. <laughs> well, a penalty fee. A penalty if fee. fee. If you, for example, in a YouTube channel like mine, say, say the same thing, like this case isn't gender violence, it's domestic violence. Because that's the thing, you know, in most cases, we don't have an investigation to show if there was a gender cause. Because gender violence needs a gender cause, not just from a gender to another. Like if I if a guy killed a woman because he was stealing from her, that's not gender violence. But in most cases, there is no not investigation about the motivation of the crime. They don't get to know ever if that gender violence or not. Because in the law, in the first law they make about gender violence, they make a really really weird definition of gender violence that goes against every other gender violence definition in the world. <laughs> it goes against of the, um, um, how do you call it, Naciones Unidas, the national, well, yeah. it, goes, <laughs> it goes against everything. And then <laughs> you go like, mm, I mean, this, I think this cannot be gender violence because there is no gender motivation through it. I use just domestic violence. You can get a penalty for this. Uh, what about like the concept of like, uh, what was it? Oh, shit, what's the name in English? Uh, femicide, <laughs> femicide, 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 yeah. 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 What, what about the femicidio? Yeah. Yeah, um, like, um, like, is it like, so how do they define it like in spain and argentina like it's just a person just trying to intentionally attack women only or yeah yeah um i mean that's the difference between a serial killer i think yeah, yeah. Between, uh, and serial femicide because Gosh. it's not like if you kill a woman it's just femicide but if it's in a gender violent context than it is, you know? Okay. And what this does, it's like it removes the the principle of the principle, I don't know. Okay. Of <laughs> equality 
into the law. You know what I mean? Like yes, I do. One of the first thing our constitution say is that we should be all treated the same to the law. We cannot have different um, or bigger penalties for the same crime, and that's exactly what these law laws are making. Like if you in the same exact condition. If you kill a man or you kill a woman, it's different. And if it does it, if it does it, if a woman does it, the same exact situation, she is getting a lower um, sentence. Yeah, sentence. 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 Than yours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I noticed that like there's just news all over the place, like how. If, for example, a woman just like murders her child or whatever, they yeah. tend to get like less sentence or punishment compared to like the guy. And so yeah. I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, how are we going to try to treat women as equals if they get like different punishments for the same crime? Well, the, it's funny because now that you mentioned that, yeah. um, there is a tendency here in the media when the oh you have almost the same crime but committed for from a guy and committed for a woman and you have how they treat the same story in different media and all all in all the media when the perpetrator is a man he murdered he killed and he he was suspected to commit gender violence and in the case of the women, she died, she fell, and she was suspected to be a victim of gender violence. And in also, it it's not just that too, but I also noticed that like, if there was like, of course, a story where like, there was a man that attacks a little girl, people yeah. will, for good reason too, condemn the action, but if it was like a female teacher, that go after like the little boy, then it's like, oh, you're so lucky. Yeah. It's... Yeah, but that, that happens all the time, everywhere. It's incredible. I mean, that would be like that guy starts saying, or that girl starts saying that how lucky they are to get with their bigger, older teacher, for example. That's a way that we have internalized our own oppression. But they don't do the same rationalization with the guys, you know? They don't they don't get to think why guys aren't seeing that this is abuse. Why guys are seeing that this is a lucky a lucky, lucky thing to happen to them that the a teacher twenty years older abuses them. And me, I don't know, it's just it's the strangest thing. Like it's like it's a big double standard. Yeah. It's like yeah. And also, not just that, though, but I noticed that, like, um, I can't talk about Spain or Argentina, but, like, for, like, a divorce courts, like, family court, mm -hmm. what happens is that, like, if a woman were to, like, you know, file a divorce against, like, the husband, that the husband loses, like, everything, like, the house, the kids, like, everything. So what's it like in Argentina and Spain? Well, in Argentina, I think it still more equal than, than in Spain. First of all, one of the things that happened in Argentina is people doesn't get married as often as in the US or in Spain. In Spain, people get married more often than, than in Argentina. Okay. But what does happen here in Spain, uh, that's mm, much more terrible here, is that with the gender violence uh, law, if a woman makes uh denuncia the, like a false accusation false like, accusation if yeah. they make a false accusation if they make an accusation at the state in the, at the moment they make the accusation without process without anything they get the guy out of the house like preventively okay. and it's incredible how most of these accusations takes place on friday and they make they make the guy to stay on the um, on the um, like commissary uh, like calabozo. 
Da- no, it's not dungeon. But the- <laughs> 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 it's not dungeon the word. <laughs> A little jail on the in the police uh, <laughs> station. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dungeon. They say the dungeon. Well, we are very close to that, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand what you. I understand what you. <laughs> I understand what you're being. Oh my god. So yeah, so they have to stay in that small jail that that is in the uh, police stations the whole weekend. Um, and that's a very normal practice to punish the guy for a couple of weeks, uh, for a couple of days. And uh, the other thing that happens is that these processes heal. They are called the guy can see the children can go to the house and get their stuff anything, you know? And those processes take between a year and a half and it can take even four or five years. So during those years, parents have no access to see their kids, no access to the, their belong to their belongings, no access to their house that in the most cases they pay for. And there is, there is in Spain camping for divorce dads that can't afford a new house because they are giving their home. wait wait when you say camping you mean like like the tents like real camping yeah oh. they have, yeah they have tents but they have also like little ca- uh, cabanas and like so a lot of that in Spain live in those conditions because they give almost their whole uh, salary to their ex-wife and to the kids that in most cases they don't even see. So it's, it's it's really terrible how this is working. And every time that a case like this comes up, it's like, a, oh, okay, that's an anecdotic case. That doesn't really happen a lot. And when you see the numbers, it's like most more than 300 cases a year. It's almost a case a day. It's more than than the the famous numbers we like to to remember all the time. About it's them. like you know, like apparently, like a like one out of the three people get raped on college campuses, or like the race gap, or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's crazy. Then, like on, you, uh, on, on the news, a story of a women that happened that went through a similar situation. Totally illegal in this case. I mean, the guy cannot take the kid without their mother's consent, and that's illegal. But in, in the other case, that's perfectly fine and normal. And the new was like the, the the nightmare of this mother who can't see her child for the last two months. It's, it's like that's the situation of three hundred parents a year in Spain, and they don't see their, their kids for years. And nobody's giving a fuck about that. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of sad. Also, have you heard about the documentary Silenciados? Yeah, of course. Like, I like I, I actually talked to the, the filmmaker behind the movie on my channel. It was, like, two years ago. But it was, like, there was, like, this major protest of all these people just going after that documentary... Because they also said the exact same points like you did. Yeah. Like, do you think? Do you think they will protest you now? I don't think so, really. Even though I made a documentary or something like that, probably would have a lot of people wanting to censor it. But even just by the thing that I'm a woman, they're gonna respect me more talking about your problems than your. <laughs> Hey, I'm a guy, I'm having this problem. Shut the fuck up! Hey, she's having this problem. Yes, sweetie, what do you need? It, just, it feels like that. It's like they have some sort of, you could say, oppressive Olympics. Like some people are more oppressed than the other, and so we have to listen to the oppressed voices higher than mm-hmm. the non oppressive voices. <laughs> yes, yes, that's incredible. I mean, for your for your case, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, like for your case, you're you're Latina, and then of course you're a woman, so you're like really high so far. Yeah, I'm really high. I'm in the top of the world. <laughs> girl, I'm a woman. I'm a Latina. I'm uh, uh, overweighted. I have. I have <laughs> 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 So I'm not transgender. I could I could be transgender. I could be a lesbian. I <laughs> more points to get, but I'm I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man, this is like crazy. Oh wait, did you just freeze right now? Oh wait, you didn't freeze. Oh, that's good. Good. Okay, so <laughs> it was like it was frozen for a moment. I don't know why, but hey, I guess the connection is getting bad right now or something. <laughs> I'm just Stacey. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Now, as far as like um, your social, like we talked about feminism, we talked about like men's issues and what's happening in Argentina and Spain. I'm kind of curious, like, what's your like, you know, outside of feminism and these issues? What are your social leanings on issues? Are you like more on the love, or how would you describe yourself? More on where? On the left. On the left. Uh I, I'm well in my channel. They started calling me a couple of months ago, um, Center Korea. But because I'm just in the middle of everything, I'm in the middle, I'm in the center. But I do feel that like I go a little more, a little bit more to the left. Um, at least that's where the Nolan diagram puts me. And I don't know at, at what point that's really useful, you know, because at some point I feel like those parameters that left and right that we use, they are actually really limited and they don't get to to see the, the whole picture of what political positions can be. I mean, they are really complex and you have a lot of um components there that i don't think we can accurately find you cannot out. really accurately pinpoint what yeah. kind of person of okay yeah okay yeah i understand yeah because like sometimes people are like uh they're complicated because you could be like socially liberal on some issues but then like for economics it's like different and so it's like there's always like you know shadows of gray yeah shadows of gray, shadows of gray exactly. yeah. i think i'm more i'm more uh, like a lefty on the um, personal individual uh choices to the social level i mean i don't give a fuck in what you want to do with your life as long as you don't bother uh, bother other people i'm totally progressive in that in that in that sense I'm, I think I'm a little more righty on the economic side, but not even to the other extreme, you know? I, I think I agree on that, but I don't think that would work to the last consequences, you know? I right. think that at the same time, we should protect uh, economic freedom. At the same time, we should acknowledge that there are some people that if we don't start from the same line we cannot get to the same point either yeah oh, getting back to your point about you saying you're not giving a fuck about what people do like what's your thoughts about prostitution well i'm totally pro in that sense <laughs> okay. I, we, I separate we all separate i think uh what is um sex work what is prostitution cho choice of prostitution and what is uh, to be exploited, what is the, all these things that happen around it. In Argentina and Latin America happens a lot. They get, they kidnap girls on the streets to force them into prosecution. That's one thing, of course, and that's terrible. But at the same time, I know for sure that a lot of women and men that are choosing that for their lives. And I think it comes from from a point where we see sex or those kind of things like something wrong to use to get money from because so like 
when I said one time, like, I know there's people that prefer to work on the sex work and sex field instead of working cleaning bathrooms at McDonald's. And someone said, oh, how can you say that? Like, it, it's totally fine to clean bathrooms at McDonald's. It's totally legit. And then I was like, I didn't say that. I mean, like, sex work or no sex work, no one wants to work at McDonald's. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, and at any point, I said that it, it is wrong to work at uh, McDonald's or cleaning bathrooms. If you rather to do that than other things, well, that's your choice. But there's people that organically don't want to do that, and they like to fuck, you know, and they want to charge for that, and they have a great life doing what they like to do and not doing something that they are not happy with because something on society tells us, no, that's something you cannot do to earn your life, you know? That's something personal and you, it's, it's like a present. It's like a gift you need to give to someone you love. Well, I don't think that that's the thing, you know? You, sex and our bodies and how do we use it depends on each one of us. And right, like, as far as the whole idea about, like, bodily autonomy, you could yeah. say the exact same thing about, like, you know, food. Like, obviously, like, stuff like, you know, too much soda or too much sugar, it could be bad for you. It could rot your teeth and a lot of stuff, diabetes, obesity. So, although it has some bad side effects, people should still be allowed to eat whatever they want to. And it's also the same kind of debate that's going on with drugs in this country. Because um, a lot of states like California, Alaska, uh, yeah, D.C. also, Colorado, Nevada, they recently legalized marijuana. Mm -hmm. And so it seems as though like, the only place that I know that I have it fully legal is just uh, Canada. Canada and probably some other place, I forget. But yeah, Canada has it completely legal. What are your thoughts about marijuana? I'm totally on with it. I am totally agree with the legalization of marijuana. I don't think it's like, and I don't know, like you go on cocaine or life, like, I don't know. I don't know what people do on cocaine, but it's not like <laughs> a hard drug that you are harming people around, like, most people I know that uh, daily consume marijuana, they are just chill, they are just, just hungry and they want to do their lives and relax and don't, don't bother anyone, anybody. And I don't think that there's really a danger over society different from you can get from, I don't know, alcohol. So that's the thing. If they are not bothering me. So people should be able to do whatever they fucking want. Yeah. I went out. Okay, it's much better. Like, it kind of froze for a second there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because, like, also, like, there's been reports, too, about, like, you know, benefits of people having, like, medical marijuana, too. Yeah. Because, like, I heard stories where people, you know, they feel, like, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. But once they start to smoke marijuana, they start to feel better. And so there's obviously some, also some sort of health benefits compared to, like, the other drugs. Of course. And even, I mean, what I see on legalizing smoking marijuana, I don't focus the attention on the, medi and the medical benefits. Because yeah. you can get those same medical benefits through the oil, for example, right. the, the cannabis oil. So my dad actually used it uh, to treat some 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 things they have on, on his back and stuff, and it and it's really well for him. It's good for him. But even though you want to use it in a re recreative way, and you don't want to take the 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 oil you want to smoke and join with your friends well i don't see anything wrong with it it's been going on for an hour and so yeah. the final question that i have for you before we sign out 
you have to teach me and my followers how to swear like an Argentinian. Like, you have to teach us the swear words from Argentina. Teach us the swear words from Argentina. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to teach you the most important one. Like, when you meet an Argentinian person, you have to say, like, hello, how are you? My name is Tyler. And what is coming is, andate a la reconcha de tu madre que te rendió. <laughs> Real, oh my god, I, really, so I, I could just say that and no, have no problem? No, uh, with, everybody is going to have a problem, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're doing trouble, yeah. The, the only one that I know is like, uh, what was it, shoot, Baluto, yeah, Baluto. Well, nobody's <laughs> getting mad at you if we said uh, to them Boludo. I mean, I wouldn't say it to your boss, for example. Or to your teacher, but if you say it to a friend or to someone like in a more social aspect, you can say the word to people. Thank you. <laughs> oh god! And let's see, let's see what else. It was yeah, it was Boludo. What else do I know from Argentina? Oh, I don't know that much curse word from Argentina. Um, Pero Tudo, Pero Pero Tudo. I think that's another one. Yeah. Pero Tudo. It's the same thing as Boludo. Okay. Huh. It means almost the same thing, yeah. Oh man, is there any more? Any more? <laughs> la concha de la lora. <laughs> I, really? really? Parrot pu pussy? <laughs> yeah. Parrot pussy. Parrot pussy. <laughs> <laughs> And then you have la concha de tu hermana, that is your sister. <laughs> and then you have la concha de tu madre, that is your mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> going. Oh. <laughs> and we have another one, but it's la concha de la gorra. And la gorra is how they call in Argentina to the police. Oh. Uh -huh. The police. <laughs> the police. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I will ever use any of these. <laughs> it would be too rude for I don't think I could use any. La reputa madre que te reñí parió. Something like your bitch mother that gave birth. Yeah, gave birth to you. Yeah. Like a thousand times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they say that Argentina like has the best curses for a Spanish country. So yeah, I can see why now. <laughs> In Argentina we are like we have the, the World Cup on squares. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So, before we, <laughs> I guess I'll laugh. It. Oh okay, before we uh, sign out, uh, do you want to share like your social media and everything? Yeah. Okay. So I, hmm, it's it's really complicated to do this in English, but I'll try. So my Instagram is balancing filtro and like, at 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 no yeah but no. I can write it to you and it's you. It's like the it's like the line, the line. Yeah, but the down line. I'll I'll post it in like in the chat like after the stream okay, is I over. Yeah. So that thing on Instagram, I'm that. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Lentropia de Valen. That's my main platform um, on YouTube, and also now I am I'm on TikTok now. And it's the same Lentropia de Valen, but all together. Wow. And of course, like your uh, Twitter is hipster, hipster. Yeah, hipster. <laughs> Four eyes and a final thing. Oh. Oops. Okay. And of course. from my teenage years. Like I have that Twitter since I I'm sixteen. Oh my god. And of course, my social media. You can find me on. <laughs> let's see, Instagram, Twitter. Facebook at 
Tyler Preston 20 and of course this YouTube channel so yeah everywhere everywhere uh so thanks again for coming on again I really appreciate it you're really funny <laughs> thank you Tyler you're so funny too I enjoyed a lot being here all right and we'll see you guys next time bye bye it's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.